My name is Courtney Bowen. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology and the Graduate Group in Demography at the University of Pennsylvania in the School of Arts and Sciences. I'm gonna to talk today about a recent study that I conducted with a big team of collaborators focused on identifying racialized disparities in aging and the life course social exposures that contribute to those racial disparities. Compared to white adults, black adults in the United States experience um, earlier onset of disease and mortality risk, more severe forms of morbidity, and really higher death rates at almost every single age. The goal of this study was twofold. The first was to test a really prominent hypothesis in social epidemiology and population aging that relative to white people in the United States, black people age at a faster pace. And this is really rooted in the idea that racial inequality in the United States um, accelerates the pace of aging by exposing racial minorities um, to a host of adverse social exposures and experiences across their lifespan. Um, and so the first goal was to really use three well-validated biomarkers uh, algorithms to test this hypothesis. The second goal of the project was to identify the life course social and economic exposures that contribute to these racialized gaps in aging. This study built on previous research and expanded it in three key ways. The first was that we used three different uh, markers of biological aging based on different algorithms with different assumptions about the aging process to test whether across these three markers we are able to observe racialized gaps in biological aging. And this was important because we wanted the study results to be robust to a variety of different markers of biological aging. The second contribution of the study was that we used data on thousands of older adults in the United States using nationally representative data. Um, so much of the work in, on, the, on this topic has used uh, smaller samples, but we wanted to test the weathering hypothesis in a nationally representative study of older adults. The third contribution of the study was that we used a variety of different methods including um, decomposition techniques to be, that allowed us to assess which life course social and economic exposures were most responsible or accounted for the most of these racialized gaps in ways that we thought were really important for informing policy and intervention. We found consistent evidence across the three measures of biological aging that black adults in the United States experience accelerated aging relative to whites. That means that on average, when we looked at black adults and white adults of the same chronological age, black adults in the study had a biological age profile that was roughly nine years older. This has really important implications for our understanding of the earlier disease risks that black Americans in the United States face relative to whites. The second key finding is that these racialized gaps are rooted in social exposures. The main finding coming out of this study is that socioeconomic differences between black and white adults accounted for a majority of these racialized gaps in biological aging. This means that using a relatively limited number of socioeconomic and stress exposure measures in our study, we were able to account for roughly 66% of the black-white gaps in biological age acceleration. This study showed, though, that using someone's age alone is a really imperfect proxy of how healthy or at risk people are. This may have important implications for healthcare providers, for example, who might screen um, older adults for chronic diseases like cancer or cardiovascular disease based on chronological age. What this study tells us is that using markers of biological aging, um, including the biomarkers that we include, may provide different clues about what someone's actual risk of m disease or mortality may be. From the life course perspective, aging is a process that starts at or even before birth. And for this reason, 
our results suggest that closing staggering racialized gaps in economic security and financial stability at the earliest of ages among children and families with young kids can have lifelong consequences as people age. Things like investing in early childhood education, reducing poverty among households and families with kids can absolutely help to close the racialized gaps in aging that we observe later in the life course. Thank you.